So when you see the definitions of the sine and the cosine, it's not going to be necessarily obvious why they should be so important. I mean, you can do your applications with right triangles and measuring sides and stuff, but the unit circle definition especially seems like a very weird and very artificial way of defining functions. And you say, well, the reason we define functions using the unit circle is that it lets us take the sine and the cosine of any number, not just the numbers between 0 and 360 degrees or 0 and 2 pi radians. And then you say, well, but so what? This is such an artificial function. Why would you want to take the sine and the cosine of other numbers? Well, the importance of the sine and the cosine can really be seen looking at their graphs. So the graphs of the sine and the cosine are going to look very similar. I'm going to plot these using Desmos, and Desmos is going to be measuring x in radians. So this is sine and cosine when x is measured in radians. The sine of x. And the cosine of x. So as I say, very similar looking graphs, they both look like waves essentially. The sine and the cosine are both wave functions. And the reason that these graphs are so important is that there are a whole lot of real world situations whose graphs should look basically like this. I mean, not, you know, exactly with these numbers and going between negative one and positive one and all of that. But you think of the height of a tide at a harbor. The tide goes up, the tide comes down, the tide goes up again, the tide comes down again. You think of the temperature over the course of a year. In the summer, it's hot. In the winter, it's cold. In the summer, it's hot again. In the winter, it's cold again. You think of a heart rate. When you're sleeping, it's low. When you're in the office, it's high. When you're resting, it's low. When you're in the office, it's high. There are all of these situations that you see in any field of study where a quantity is going up and down and up and down and up and down again. And we can model those using the sine and the cosine. And it's really that more than right triad. Although right triangles are certainly important, but it's really the graph, the ability to model these rising and falling situations that make the sine and the cosine so important. So just looking at this graph a little, I've made the observation, and of course the book has made the observation, that the sine and the cosine are periodic, which says, I just shared the wrong screen, bear with me for just a moment. So we've said that the sine and the cosine are periodic, and what that means is that we'll work in radians for now. 
the sine of x plus 2 pi equals the sine of x and the cosine of x plus 2 pi is the cosine of x. How is this fact reflected in the graph? Well, it's this periodicity that's causing the graph to repeat. Let's look at the sine of x on an interval that is two pi units long. This two pi is the period of the sine. And now let's look at the sine of x again on another interval of length two pi. So here's one interval of length two pi. Here's another interval of length two pi. Notice that these graphs look exactly the same, just in, they're in different faces on the Cartesian plane, but they both go up, come down, and come up again. And the graph of the sine is just this shape repeated over and over again. So that's what periodicity means when you're looking at it graphically, that a graph is the same shape repeated over and over again. And you can look at the cosine, and you'll see the same thing. Here's the cosine from 0 to 2 pi. Here's the cosine from 2 pi to 4 pi. You look at this. You look at this. It's the same shape repeated over and over again. Let's end this video by summarizing a little. All of the statements I'm about to make about the sine and the cosine are statements that I've already made. There's nothing new here, but we'll now make them with their graphs in front of us. The period is 2 pi. We discussed that. The domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. The sine and the cosine are defined for every number, in other words. The range goes from negative 1 to positive 1. If we look at the graph, let's look at both the graphs. You see they um, go down to negative 1 and up to positive 1. Down to negative 1, up to positive 1. The cosine is symmetric around the y-axis. That's to say that if you think of the y-axis as a mirror, the cosine is its own reflection. The sort of fancy way of saying that, and we've of course, as I've said, we've already mentioned this, but the kind of fancy way of saying that is that the cosine is even. 
The sign also has symmetry. It's less obvious symmetry, but the sign is symmetric around the line y equals negative x for reasons that I've never been totally clear on. Instead of saying that we're symmetric around this line, we say that the sign is symmetric around the origin. And again, the, the fancy way of saying that is that the sign is an odd function. So, this is the introduction to the graphs of the sine and the cosine. Of course, we're going to want to be able to take those graphs and modify them. Like I talk about, you know, this could represent the temperature over the course of a year. If it's the temperature over the course of a year, the minimum temperature shouldn't be negative one, and the maximum temperature shouldn't be positive one. We'll want to go from negative 20 to 100, or whatever it is. Likewise, this period is wrong. It shouldn't take high days to go from the um from the minimum temperature to the maximum temperature, it should take about half a year. So now that we have these basic graphs, the next thing we're going to do is talk about how we can modify them. But as for this video, I will leave it here.